Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalay Is It Done. I am your host, Shadow Fury 333, and today we're going to have a match series between Google Frog and Capricious. It'll be starting on Titan Duel. Not sure if this was best of three or first to three, but it's going to be three games. And let's begin. Google Frog going for the Shieldbot Factory, while Capricious going for the Light Vehicle Factory. Capricious going off. About as aggressive as Google Frog. Both players going early bot into. Actually, no, Google Frog just going banned for now. While Capricious going for Scorcher into Mason. Not the best placement, I'm afraid, for that factory. That, that metal extractor might get in the way of the factory. But at any rate, Scorcher to Mason. So Capricious doing a bit of scouting, but not really too much aggression. While Google Frog going for three bandits into a convict. Are they going to be sending the bandits off to the side? They are flanking around with the bandits. They're not sure where the Capricious vehicles are supposed to go. Like, where Capricious vehicles are going, or Capricious units in general. But, the bandits are covering all angles, which is pretty smart. However, they will find the light, the Scorcher very quickly, so... There you go. At least one of them. Google Frog does not know whether or not Capricious is being more aggressive than that. And the answer is no! Capricious is being very economics-focused. Google Frog... Just, however, did get a bandit, so both players are relatively similar in their openings. A bit of aggression for scouting. Oh, this bandit is not very lucky at all. Capricious is commander. Not taking any damage. Not allowing that to come in. So, at this point, neither player really let any other one in. Capricious, at the same time, their Scorcher didn't manage to get any damage done. Got away with his life, mind you. I mean, that's good, but still... Not ideal for either. I mean, it's kind of it's broken even. Neither players really lost too much. Both players have information. Both players are approaching about the same rate of expansion. Though, admittedly, Capricious is actually starting to really get off the ground with their expansions. I mean, right now, 17 metal and 16 energy to 10 metal and 13 energy. Google Frog is expanding a lot more slowly. They're much more concerned about being attacked. While Capricious is not building defenses at all. They're relying entirely on their commander and on their Scorchers, which kind of makes sense. I mean, considering the factories, Capricious doesn't have to worry about very fast armies moving around the map, while Google Frog does. I mean, Capricious, if they attacked anywhere, they could very quickly move the Scorchers to any other part of Google Frog's base. If Google Frog attacks, Capricious can respond with the Scorchers before really much damage is done. Assuming they still have Scorchers alive in order to do so, which is not a safe assumption right now. They need to... Okay, they, they got more. They got more. But it was not entirely a safe assumption. I mean, if Google Frog had managed to kill that other Scorcher, the bandits probably would have marched in. Wouldn't surprise me if they did. It looks like Google Frog is actually setting up for an attack. Ten bandits lining up. Five of them already in position. Looks like they're just going to try to power through. Oh no, they're not. Okay, Google Frog's not going to be quite so foolhardy, or at least not quite so aggressive. Going to wait for the lot. Going to wait for all ten. Then I'm assuming that we're going to be seeing a bit of a direct attack here, because Google Frog, they probably realize Capricious is going really heavy on economy. And I mean, Google Frog is sort of going on economy, but not as heavily. Like I said, they focused a bit more on defense, focusing a lot more on attack. And their offense is, yeah, because a low priority veal factory for Capricious, while the bot factory for Google Frog is on normal priority, so Google Frog is definitely focusing a lot more on building units. And Capricious with a leveler coming up, so that will help with the bandits. And Rackdeer coming up. Bit of a read on Google Frog's part. I guess they're assuming either leveler or ravager. Or just, maybe probably levelers most likely. And they'd be right. So Google Frog right now, they're going for... Well... They're going for an attack, trying to basically punch through. At this point though, they actually would have a very good opportunity. This is the perfect timing to do it. And they don't know it. I think Google Frog will figure it out once they either see... Okay, Capricious's forces are not on radar yet. Now they're on radar... Now. And no, Google Frog... Move, they're moving to the defensive, giving Capricious even more map control to work with. Capricious not going for the main base, though. What does Capricious know? Oh, okay, they do know where the bandits are. Are they going to try to go for the bandits directly? That seems very risky. I mean, Scorchers in these numbers aren't terrible, but it's not easy to hit a large army with Scorchers. They just 
scorches because of the heat ray thing, it starts to become less and less effective. However, it looks like Google Frog's commander under a fair amount of threat, while at the same time the scorchers trying to distract the bandits, so Google Frog's commander is pretty much naked. But thankfully strong enough that Capricious will be forced away for a little while. Regardless, Capricious still pushing ahead. I mean, Google Fox Commander is forced away, meaning Capricious has the center of the map. They don't. Neither player has the corners, though. The corners are totally empty. And Scorchers here being forced back as well. So Google Frog dealing a bit of damage, but only really one bandit died. That's about it. Bunch of damage dealt. And the leveler in the center of the map, Google Frog not going for. Well, I mean, they didn't know about the timing, but the timing's over now. My, the thing is, is that Google Frog, yeah, they could have gone for the timing, too. I, I suppose someone might say, well, they could go for the timing, but Scorches are really fast. So the Scorches could go on defense, and it would be a lot harder to push in. Ah, that's what the Rack Tears for is for the Commander. That's less of a read and definitely more reliable. I agree with that. Regardless, Google Frog is going to be... Still having a hard time punching through. The leveler is not that effective. Two or three levelers will be quite effective, but one leveler on its own would get overwhelmed very quickly. And Scorcher's coming in. Google Frog's commander is gonna go down. Is it? Is it? Oh, wow. No, it's not. No? Yes? Maybe? No! Wow! Those Scorchers got heavily distracted. That must piss Capricious the hell off. Because I know it pissed me right off. And now, Google Frog going for a counterattack. Capricious having lost a lot of scorches. Google Frog knows there's not much to defend here. These bandits can push through with some losses, but they can still punch through. And Google Frog's commander safe behind their own lines. Ah, uh, I mean that's where targeting comes in. You gotta, you gotta target units if you really want to kill a unit. You have to hit the target button. However, the levelers are managing to clean this up. Bit of damage dealt. Capricious still way ahead economically though, so it's not the biggest deal. The thing is, though, if you're fighting Google Frog, you have to be ahead economically. It's really hard to get through if you're not ahead economically, just because Google Frog's really good at just taking the right moves. They know this game well. It's really quite tricky to fight them. Given that they're the person I play against the most, it's not surprising I know that. But yeah, it's like, economic advantage is a bit easier to take, but it's super necessary. Like, you need to use the economic advantage if you have it. And Capricious has it, but they're losing a lot of units. They've been losing a lot of units this entire game. The levelers are doing a decent job, though. I mean, they did clean up some of the bandits. This will need to be rebuilt ASAP, though. But, I mean, the thing is, as soon as Capricious so shows any weakness, Google Frog will be on it. And that's the tricky part. And levelers here, ooh, this is not what I'd recommend. Not one at a time, at least. In a group, sure, but one at a time, no way, that's suicide. Nice flank, though. I mean, the levelers, good distraction for the Scorches, I guess. I mean, the the bandits wanted to move by and move away from the levelers, so then the Scorches could just wipe out the flank. I've never actually seen a flanking maneuver pulled off in 0k, honestly. Most of the time, you go for a flank, and then automatically the boss just... Well, usually it's against bots. They just automatically correct and deal with the flank efficiently. So it's rare that that actually gets pulled off. But hey, there you go. It got pulled off. Now Capricious, nice expansion, nice reclaim. I like this. I like this a lot. They're reclaiming the field. They're getting all the resources they can from that. Wonderful. One thing they need to do, though, is rebuild here. And possibly build up here as well. And over in the... They, building the corners is a good idea. Rebuilding here is almost necessary. I mean, they're, they lost that. They, they can retake it. It's one of those things that you see a high level play all the time. It's one of the things that makes the difference between a good 0k player and a great 0k player is how on point you are retaking metal extractors you've lost. Because you're going to lose metal extractors, especially once you get to higher levels and people are really aggressive and really good at finding small weaknesses to punch through. You're going to lose metal extractors. The important thing is whether you can retake them and if you retake them quickly. And Capricious is not doing that, and I don't know if Google Frog realizes it. At this point, Capricious is being aggressive enough, it doesn't matter. Luckily for them, Google Frog has been consistently losing metal extractors, so Capricious has not really needed to rebuild so much. But if Capricious' assault ever gets torn apart, like if this does not succeed, then Google Frog will push right back, re-expand everywhere. And they're already kind of setting up for an expansion. I think defenses 
for as soon as they get rid of the levelers. I mean, the thing is, if they do that, then once that's done, and these Ravagers really have no chance of getting through the bandits, or not no chance, but they're going to have a hard time getting through the bandits. But yeah, if these levelers go away, then Google Frog is probably going to re-expand everywhere, have a ton of reclaim to work with, and just bounce right back. But, I don't know, I think at this point Capricious might be able to... Did this work? No, it worked! Okay, Google Frog throwing the towel! Capricious taking the first game! Well done, Capricious! I still think retaking the... Okay, they did take the Metal Extractor eventually. It's still important to retake those. But like I said, it kind of was working out that Capricious was taking Google Frog's Metal Extractors, like not just destroying them, but taking them as well. So that worked. But that was kind of risky. I mean, Capricious did have the Metal... They had a Metal Income advantage the entire time, but Google Frog, if they had expanded to a corner and hadn't been spotted, then yeah. Oh, if you're wondering about the nano frame, the green nano frames is because it's not this engine, but the next engine seems to have problems with the nano frames. Like, you know, before it would be like it's nano frame, it's the wireframe mesh, and then a color, but like it's a sorry, flat shaded color mesh, and then it's the textured mesh. In the new engine, the flat shaded color stage is just the textured stage, so it's stuck textured static for a third of its build time. And that apparently doesn't happen with the standard non-team-based green nanoframes. So it's actually a workaround for the bug in the next engine, rather than anything to do with anything super urgent. Yeah, how many units were killed, though? Wow, Capricious actually had a unit value advantage on Google Frog the entire time. Sheesh, I did not expect that. Not to, Oh, wow, really? Capricious lost Fury... Oh, wicked, wow, okay. I thought Capricious had actually lost a few more units, but no. Capricious pretty much had everything in advantage of that game, even Metal Excess. I mean, it was pointed out that Google Frog is a bit rusty. That makes sense, yeah. Let's see the next game, though, because apparently the next game was played afterwards as part of a series, so that will be on Tandem Craters. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment. <laughs> 